Jack. Yes. Guess what time it is? Uh, it's about 7.22. It's time for Culture Swap. Swap my culture. There we go. That's how it's done. What are we doing next time? Oh, I remembered. What? To do the what we do doing next time bit. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we right. normally forget I, I, that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, props. Right. Listeners, next time on Culture Swap, we're going to find out who the father is. Of? No one. I went down a rabbit hole in my head. And I can't find the way out. Wait. Next time on Culture Swap, listeners, next week, next two weeks, in next episode, in the next episode of Nerd on Nerd, when we do Culture Swap, we'll be doing the movie Snowpiercer. This was, for, for those of you playing along at home, this was the movie that we were going to do last time, and I had to beep out because we had a much better idea um, after recording. Yeah. So, if you were wondering, oh, what was that thing they beeped out? It was Snowpiercer. It was Snowpiercer. So, do you know what we did there, Jack? Like a little mystery for for our listeners to to try and unravel. Did you enjoy it, listeners? Let us know. Did you feel indifferent or struggle to really care? How could they let us know, Jack? Yeah, tweet us at nerd on nerd and email us at nerd on nerdpod at gmail dot com. And uh, do that if you want to tell us your thoughts on Snowpiercer, and we can discuss that next time. Now, what is important to know, um, as we discussed in the last episode, we're doing the movie, not the book. This is based upon. So I'm hoping we've made that clear. I think you just did. Good. But this week... We we, did. We're doing something a little bit different, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing a a computer game. This has been a very computer game episode. This is our digital episode. It's all virtual reality as well. That would be weird. Put on your headsets now. So wait, how would that work? Like, they could virtually, reality sit next to us. They're in virtual reality now. Sitting next to us. Whoa, they're here. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> Whoa. This is a weird bit. This week, we did Overwatch. Jack. Yes. What's Overwatch? It's a new game by Blizzard, a company that's famous for World of Warcraft and maybe Hearthstone and Starcraft. And uh, Diablo. And Diablo. I think they're more famous for the others, though. Uh, I think it depends on what circles you run in. Okay. Uh, it's a new sort of FPS squad-based shooter which is more objective based than kill based which is good but uh yeah it's, it's sort of a, it runs in the same vein as sort of team fortress 2 so um blizzard is the company that made it as you correctly stated thank you when did you first kind of what's the first blizzard game you played uh probably world uh, probably warcraft 3 same for me actually um now for those that don't know that's like a real time strategy game right yeah and um the next game i played was diablo 2 I never played the old Diablos. Well, we're going to. At well, we're going to play point. Diablo 3. At some point. Um, it's more of a dungeon crawler. Yeah. And uh, then I moved on to World of Warcraft. And that was like eight Which years of my life. I'm never getting back. Um, yeah. And what what was your next kind of Blizzard game? Uh, Probably World of Warcraft. And, and how did you find it? <laughs> That's about a week of my life. I'm never getting back. Okay, and then um, I guess for me the next one would be Hearthstone because I never got into StarCraft. I don't know about yourself. Uh, I've played. I played StarCraft too. See, I'm not a big fan of these real time strategy games. So... I love real time strategy games. Yeah, uh, it's just one of the many ways we differ when it comes to games. It's one of the many ways we differ in life. <laughs> yeah, like I, I like good games, and then you like um, the rest. You remember how you at one point you were trying to get the listeners to like you. Yeah, I think you might have just lost the entire StarCraft audience, which I imagine in the future will be quite big. Oh, I don't know if we're big in Korea. It's quite big in America and England too, buddy. Yeah? Yeah. Are they listening to the show? I mean, probably people that like StarCraft are, yeah. Yeah, good. It's like the biggest eSport. If they're listening, right, I don't give a shit which one of us they like and why they're listening, as long as they keep listening. Um... So yeah, Hearthstone was next. Hearthstone. I think yep. you'll find it's GIF, not GIF. Um, no, I, I I think it's GIF. Yeah, well, people would disagree with that. I know. Um, like I'm disagreeing with Hearthstone. Uh, we've both dabbled. Well, I dabbled. You got quite addicted to it. Yep, I love Hearthstone. And then I guess the next one would be Overwatch, right? Yep. So what we're basically trying to get at at this point is that well, don't say we. Blizzard have a, a long history of games, and I'd say pretty well received. Like you, you consider, like you said, StarCraft huge following. Uh, World of Warcraft probably their biggest game. I think it's fair to say. Yep. And now we've got Overwatch. Sorry, so what was your point? 
just to clarify. They've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> Good. No, they, they, they've done a lot of variety, but like, okay. So I'd say the difference is in those, you could basically lump those into maybe three categories. You've got the real-time strategy stuff, you've mm-hmm. got the MMO stuff, and then you've got the um, like the Hearthstone, which is, I don't know how you'd really categorise that. Well, Hearthstone's a card game, so that's really simple. Cool. And I'd say elements of all of these have trickled their way into Overwatch. Go on. How? Uh, so, the fast-paced nature of the battles of the real-time strategy. You know, like, with a real-time strategy game, you'll play against, like, someone, and then it'll be over, and then you play against someone new, right? <laughs> no. That's how that <laughs> no, works. Link. No. So, real-time strategies are notoriously famous for being quite long. Yeah, yeah, but, but what I'm saying is every match you're against a different opponent. Are you grasping at straws, buddy? That. Do you want me to throw you a rope? That. I've got this. Okay. Just play. No, I disagree with you, but yeah, sure. Alright. And then. For the sake of argument, let's say I agree. Yeah, World of Warcraft is massively online. Yeah, which this one isn't. (laughs) This one's all online. It's not massively multiplayer. No, but it's all online. Hey, buddy, welcome to the 90s. Yeah, the real time strategy games had campaign modes. Suck on that. Suck at it. No, what? So that doesn't go into Overwatch, so I don't know what your point is still. So far, right. so no. far, the only oh, thing you, the, after saying everything trickles into Overwatch, Elements. the only thing you've trickled into Overwatch was that <laughs> joining new matches is quick. And Elements. you said it like it's some design point. <laughs> Elements like of sat there each and went, game. I really want the uh, StarCraft ability to enter a match. <laughs> yeah, elements of each game. And what I'm saying is, you can see how Blizzard have laid the, the building blocks of this game from others. Right. See, I disagree. I think what Blizzard are really and, good at doing... No, you're, you're missing Blizzard the most really important one. Uh, um, not doing that. You've they're, missed the really important really one. They're really good at taking one... Like, making a game. So they started with an RTS, and then they went completely... Like, a totally different direction and made an MMORPG. Yeah, oh, don't get me wrong. They also... Then then they were like, you know what? We're going to do a card-based game, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, Like, that's right. totally different to anything they've done before. Then they went, we're going to do a MOBA, because they made uh, Heroes of the Storm. We've got about that. Yeah, you haven't so let me finish that, making my totally point, totally different. And then they were like, we're going to do an FPS. They're, like, crazily good at making totally different stuff. You just kind of jumped in as I was building up to make my grand point, and you oh, just weird, kind of Liam. made it. And How it's does like, that feel? You just stole Does it feel good point. when your friend does that to you? Because what I was going to say, if you'd have let me finish, is they've taken small elements of each of these, because you missed the most important one with, with Hearthstone, where you open new packs of cards, which you do in this one but it's boxes instead big difference and um they've tacked on something new to it first what? person shooter right okay so again just to clarify they've taken bits from every game yeah. the speed of starcraft 2 and Warcraft. like the ancient greek gods themselves <laughs> blizzard looked down upon their their creations and said we need the speed of starcraft the, the matchmaking in particular of hearthstone <laughs> yep <laughs> The always and online they, of they World of Warcraft. An FPS game. <laughs> no, the always online of World of Warcraft. Yep, yep, sure. And then they went, and now, guns. I think you did that thing where you tried to make a point and then sort of went off the rails a little bit. I don't know what you're on about. You were too, too proud to come back. I think, I think those listeners that listen, um, for me, will know exactly the sort of point I'm making. If any of the listeners understood, could they please tweet us? To explain right. it to me, because I didn't understand. Let's just get to the main point here, Jack, which is you think it's a bloody good game, and yep. I think you're wrong. Yeah, you don't think it's a terrible game. You no. just don't think it's as good as I think it is. No, I I would say average. Average. Fair. Three out of five. But we're so getting what? ahead of ourselves. <laughs> yeah, you've just given a rating. Yeah. So here's the thing, right? Yeah. And I, I, I need to give you a little bit of background as well. Okay. Paint me a word <laughs> picture. Okay, close your eyes. Picture a dashing twenty something year old man living alone happily playing his PlayStation four. Yeah? Yep. He loads it up and it makes a little noise that it makes when it loads up. And uh he opens up a game that he's been playing for probably about two weeks now. He's he's been loving it. He'd say it's probably his game of the year, he would. It's a little game called Uncharted Four. Yep. And he completes it and he goes, Wowie, what an experience that was. Just beautiful game. Uh, just visually sumptuous, narratively engaging. The the gameplay was a joy. And then a new game arrives on his doorstep, and it's Overwatch. What a difference, eh? Yeah. What a difference. I don't know what your point is. 
So my point is, when you take like when you say, when you consider my did game you, of the year is Uncharted. Did you buy? 4, did you buy Overwatch thinking it would be a narrative masterpiece, taking you on a journey through the history of Overwatch? I didn't know what I was getting into. Oh, okay, well that was your mistake then, buddy. I mean, bearing in mind, research the shit you buy. Bear in mind, yeah, I accidentally picked just, up. You know, that's just something to bear bear for the future. Well, bear in mind, I accidentally picked up Battleborn, thinking it was Overwatch. I mean, yeah, you bought the wrong game, which is quite impressive. Yeah. So, I the only thing I knew about this was that one, it was Blizzard, and like we said, I know that they've done good story before because I was addicted to World of Warcraft, and two, uh, lots of people were talking about it. That's all I knew. Right. So here's the thing, right? I don't think you can compare Uncharted 4 and Overwatch. Well, no, because one's really, really good in like Game of the Year, and the other one's Overwatch. No, based on the fact that you, uh, what you're doing is comparing two totally different aims. Like, Blizzard didn't sit down and go, we want to make a game no, that but, gives you this right. crazy narrative that's really... Aw- we want people to leave being like the story of Overwatch is incredible, just no. like how Uncharted didn't go. We want to make the best multiplayer experience. But do you know what both games sat year? down and probably said? We want to we, make a good game. We want to make something fun. Uh, I feel like, judging by the like developer diaries of uh, the Overwatch team, I imagine theirs was actually with more of an aim of being fun than Unchart- Uncharted was. Disagree. Uncharted was a delight to play I Overwatch. Like, yeah, I'm not saying it wasn't a delight. No. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking it was about fun. fun. Yeah, it was it, fun. Yeah, I imagine it was, it was fun. I'm not saying it was Delightfully fun. fun. I'm saying that the Overwatch team, their whole process was based on if a feature isn't fun, we get rid of it. And if we think something is fun, we add it. I can immediately think of some features they should have gotten rid of. Because that's yeah, the no, other thing. Yeah, no, based on your own opinion. Yeah, this but is there's, the issue, this is, is a point I wanted to make with go you, on, actually. What, what bit's not fun? There are some features that I feel like they've put in there thinking they'll be fun. Like, go on, give me an example. I'm building up to it. I don't want you to build up. I want you to tell me what the fuck know, you're talking because about. Because here's so the far thing. you've made three different points and I don't know what any of them were. If I don't make my point first, you'll jump in and start arguing it before I've even made my point. So let me make my point and then I'll give you the example. So I feel like they've sat around and they've gone... Oh, we need to make this fun. Everything, it all needs to be so fun. But it isn't, like, not all of it is fun. And let me give you the example now. Because the, the, while some of it is fun, don't get me wrong, a lot of it is just inconsequential. So the bit that I'm thinking of specifically, at the end, you can vote who you think, like, the player of the matches or whatever. Oh, it's just fun. Doesn't matter. It's all fun. It's just so much fun. Let's have fun with it. But because there's no, like, impact, like, you don't get anything for being the player voted player of the match there's no fun to it it just feels pointless do you realize how depressing that sounds for no. you for you i imagine there are people genuinely wiping away tears as you say that i don't think like, they as are. they as they just get another little look yeah i think they're, they're standing That's and so applauding depressing that the they're only, wiping the away only thing that you think is fun is being rewarded for something like you can't just appreciate someone being nice so the fact that sometimes you finish a game and you'll see that seven people voted you. Oh, that pisses match, me off. Which means that there, that means that the six people on your team possibly did it, but also definitely some people on the other team voted for you, which I think is really nice. And they it probably like did it sarcastically. Being friendly. No, no, but no one's fucking saying, yeah, you did well sarcastically. That's they when people are. do GG and all that bullshit. The GG itself is not that. It's but the, it's um, just such a pointless feature. It's not needed. It doesn't add anything to the about? game. What does it add that's to the game? That's so. Bo- that's such a stupid view. Right. I would, do you genuinely want to know what that's about? What does it add I to the game? I know what the reason is. What does it add? Right. No, I'm not talking about what it adds. I'm saying why they added it. I don't, I don't care why they added it. They probably added it because they thought, wouldn't this be fun? No, that's literally not why they added it. Then why they would they add it? it? Because the game that, they, that they'd made before was Heroes of the Storm, which is a MOBA. Now, I don't know how much you know about MOBAs. They are massively online battle arenas. Yes, you know the abbreviation. Do you know much about uh, is it Smite and... What's the famous one? League of Legends? League of Legends. Um, I know that League of Legends, when you type it quickly, is LOL. Yes, right. That's not the point, but yes, that's also right. It's a point. Okay, so it is a point. But basically, the communities around League of Legends and a lot of other MOBAs, right... It got to the point where the developers of those games had to start implementing, like, huge bans. They were having to go through their servers and, like, set up all these automated bots to find hate speech. Because, basically, the communities became so toxic. Like, people, they, like new people weren't joining that. They were losing customers because people were coming onto their games, being shouted at in beginner matches and being told that they were shit. So people were like, well, I don't want to play this game because it's just mean. So when Blizzard released Heroes of the Storm, they came in with the attitude, we don't want that. So they tried to implement their stuff, and their community on that game is better than on the other MOBAs, right? 
So when they got to Overwatch, they said, right, you know, where, where what else is like that? Things like Call of Duty, where people are really mean to each other all the fucking time. All these sort of games, they were like, we don't want people to come to our game and have that experience where people are mean to them and where you can go at the end of a match and go, I'm the best, you suck. So they got rid of the kill stuff. They, they don't show your kills to everyone. You see what you did, but no I one think else sees what you did. I think that's a smart decision. Yeah. So then, to because they don't have like a, oh, you're the best, they put in a thing where you get to vote and just say... I think this guy did really well. It's not about getting something. It's not meant to it's be a reward. Just I don't know why you're pointless. so fixated on the idea that you have to get things because it's someone voted pointless. you good. Pointless. No, I'm not saying you have to it's get things. It's not pointless. That's so stupid, Liam. That's such a stupid attitude to have. Do you know? Do you know what would be? What does it? What would it add to the game by taking that out? So, okay, here's here's my suggestion for an alternative, right? No, no, no. We're not doing alternatives. I'm asking, what does it add to the game? You said they should never have added it. So yeah. what would you have ha- so what is without that the end is literally just a screen with yeah. six of your faces no the, the end is just how you did and then on to the next match right so you think there shouldn't be any acknowledgement of anything no what what you just my think the game should end and no one should be able to go oh, I man, think you it really should well. be one of two things either that or the second thing right you can still do the little voting thing but you know how at the end of a match they show you the play of the match it would be cool if the person you voted for that was the, their player of the match was what got shown. What? No, that wouldn't that work. That would be cool. That wouldn't work. It would feel like my vote had consequence, which it at the moment... It wouldn't work, though. I Liam, might that, as well That just... concept doesn't work. Why not? Because, right, because one of the reasons that I end up on those cards a fair amount is when I'm playing as Roadhog, yeah. who, for listeners, is a character that is a big tank, he whips a chain around and can hook people and drag them into him. I seem to get the stupid card a lot that is hook accuracy... They yeah. can't do a play of the match, which is me repeatedly hooking people, like a montage of the hooks I did in the match. I'm sorry, but considering a lot of the play of the matches is just one character hitting his turret, yes, they 100% can do that. No, yeah, but that's a specific moment. Yes, it's slightly broken for Trollbjorn, or not really Bastion, because you actually see the kills of Bastion. It's specifically Trollbjorn yeah. that has that issue, right? That's So they've that's one character. What you're suggesting is one where there's no card that's like... there's like. I think there's a environmental kills. I'm trying to think of one that's like, if there's a card that says you killed five people all at once. And I don't know if there is. Oh, there's kill streak, I guess. Or player kill streak. But what you're saying is the player of the match wouldn't be a moment where you got the most deaths or you rezzed your whole team or whatever. You're Unless people voted for that. Be... No, but you're saying, no, but I'm saying those aren't cards. There isn't a card that says at one moment you did really well. The cards are the whole match. Well, maybe they should change the cards. I don't think the cards need looking at because I that honestly bit just don't is know broken. what you're fucking talking about. I genuinely don't like as much as I like arguing with you, this one I genuinely don't understand what you're saying. I feel like we need to explain to people who are listening what the game is. I feel like we haven't done a good job of that yet. It's an objective based shooter, so it'll be like capture. Yeah, point but a. so you get what I'm, t- um, I'm explaining <laughs> You get a choice it's of like how many capture characters capture point A, capture point B. To do that, you pick from a variety of characters with different skills. Is it like twenty six? Uh yes. Or less. Twelve? No, it's more than 12. There's four... Is it five? Is it 20? Probably. I'm trying to think if there's a certain amount in each character category. I think one of the categories maybe only has four people. Yeah, the supports only have four. 19? Yeah, sure. There's a lot. There's, yeah, a lot. And they all have different abilities. And uh, what I would say, in the game's defence, is it is pretty well balanced. Yeah. It felt... It feels unbalanced sometimes. It is unbalanced sometimes, but that is... No, but then you learn how to... Because, like... So one of the big issues that everyone was have everyone was having or when it like sort of first came out was at the lower ranks people were getting owned by Bastion, who is a mm. character that can turn into a mount like into a turret and just annihilate everyone. Yeah. But then part of the issue with Overwatch is I think people play it like it's in Call of Duty. You never you can switch your class, but no one really does. They all just sort of you go, oh, I've made this specific. Yeah, load one out. person's really like, I like being a sniper, so fuck yeah. everyone else. I'm gonna sit back here and snipe. Whereas. So people, when they play this game, pick one character and go, oh, I'm really good with him, so I'm going to be him. But like the way you're meant to do it is you're meant to like adapt. So when, when you're like, oh, the other team's got a Bastion, you pick a character that's good against Bastion. Yeah. Like, I think Hanzo can kill him in two shots, possibly. Yeah, I mean, there are certain setups that are very difficult to uh, go against unless your whole team are kind of playing along like, yeah, that correctly. Is the, that, see, that's the, that's the thing I, I will agree with you on. I think it's... It's the, one of the issues with the game is when you get stuck with a team that don't know what they're doing or, I don't know, seem to be playing badly, that sucks. 
Mm. See, I'd say, for me, my big issue with the game is, is it's fun for a little frolic or whatever, but there was nothing to it that kept me coming back. So I think what they've implemented into the game to try and get you coming back is that whole... Uh, so basically, as you play and when you win and stuff, you get experience and you rank up. When you rank up, you get what's called a loot box. Is yep. it? You can open those and they un- unlock um, different kind of things. But it's, it's all visu- visual things, pretty much. Or like um, cosmetic, that's the word I'm looking for. So yep. like you could get like a new skin for your character or a new spray paint, which you can put on the environment or... Um, like new uh, lines that they can say, right? And I think the way that that, that that whole thing is there to try and get people coming and playing more, and that's that's the incentive to keep you coming back. But for me, that just wasn't a strong enough incentive to keep coming back and playing more and more. And I think because there wasn't like a story mode, so I didn't really know any of the characters. I know you said that you, there's like stuff online, but I didn't care about the game enough to look into it. There's, there was nothing... Once I kind of played each character a little bit, there was nothing that got me wanting to keep playing. But see, this is the thing, right? I get what you're saying about the loot boxes, and I agree with you to an extent. Mm. But I think what the loot boxes are there for is to hook you initially. Like, yeah. I think I think for the first few games, people are playing and being like, oh, it's cool, I'm getting loot boxes quite quickly, mm. right? But I don't think that the people that are playing it now... I, I don't know how many people that are, are sort of level like 30 plus say yeah i don't know how many of them are only playing it to get loot boxes because i'm not no I i'm don't sure by that anymore. point i'm sure by that point um i think people like the idea of mastering a character no no you're wrong you're so wrong that's the opposite of what people are doing i i, I, I think... only know this because i'm in, i'm in the like overwatch subreddit and i read what people are talking about right but that's like, not that's the opposite an, of what people are doing that's not an accurate reflection of the entire it is user the high base levels because the other people are people like you that have played it for a bit don't care enough to like go and read that stuff i've so no i've been on the playing. subreddit it's a lot of people just posting the gifs it's a lot of that um yeah if you just look at the gifs yeah. yeah but i i honestly think that that is such a small fraction of the user base that you couldn't say that was an accurate representation of all of the higher level stuff I think it no. I think it is though of the higher levels because to get to the higher levels you have to play the game a lot. Yeah, but I don't think everyone at, so on the higher you level is on think Reddit. There are people at level sixty who are just going on to get loot boxes. No, no, no. I'm what I'm saying is I don't think the subreddit is an right. Well, that wasn't my point. My point was that I don't think the high levels are going on there to get loot boxes. And I what don't are they going, going on there, on there for? to master a character? I think they're going on because it's a good game and they enjoy it. The same reason that people are still playing Team Fortress Two. Which is really fucking old. I've never played because it. Because they genuinely enjoy I know you haven't. I just don't think this game is for you. No, well, see, I think see, that's I... the issue. I don't think you I don't think you enjoy I like I don't think your brain ticks in the way that makes people enjoy this game. No, so it's basically to get me playing, I had to kind of invent reasons to play, which turned into You didn't invent I'm... reasons, you went I'm gonna get all the trophies. No, not all of them. You're because some of them are ridiculous, but I was like, I wanna get to fifty percent of the trophies. Right. That was my not, goal. You didn't invent a reason. Yeah, because That's if, just your if no, addiction. no, because when I was playing Uncharted Four, I wasn't like, right, the only way I'm going to turn this on to carry on playing it is so I can get another trophy. You see, you see what I'm saying here? I get what you're saying. Yeah. So with this, I did have to invent that reason to keep me playing it, so I could review it fairly for the podcast. Because otherwise, I reckon I'd have maybe played it a couple of nights with like you and Dan and your little friends, but I probably wouldn't have done more than like maybe two nights. Okay. So my only counterpoint to that and it's not based on the game this mm-hmm. is based on you yeah. would be that what happened was this game came out yeah I played it I enjoyed it you were playing it you enjoyed it or you know you were playing it yeah uh, we weren't going to do it for the podcast yeah and then you were still playing more than two nights might I point out which I believe was the limit you said you'd probably have played it if you weren't doing it for the podcast but you had already played more than two nights before you decided that had we were going to do this for the podcast yes had 100% I. Mm. Yes, a hundred percent. We did not play it two nights and then record the last episode. Okay. No, so if, if you remember, we recorded and then that was the first time we were playing it that night after we recorded. No, it wasn't. I was play- I played before that. Yeah, you did. I couldn't because I was installing it. Remember, so I ended up watching um, Goosebumps. So that was my first time playing it after we recorded. You're right. Yes, <laughs> but what you're not right about 
is that's not when we decided to play Overwatch for the podcast. No, that's no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. We decided this. a couple of days yeah. later. So I'm right. It was more than two days. It wasn't two days. It was about a week later that you rung me and said, I'm going to edit out the bit where we talk about Snowpiercer and I'm going to say we'll do it. we should do Overwatch. Yeah, because we were you doing it already. It more. Before you decided to do it, you had been playing it more because I remember, dis- I remember specifically at that point being like, oh, you must like this game and you being like, no, I, I, I don't. And I was like... <laughs> What are you talking about? No, okay, you're no. You with me every night, and you were yeah. like, yeah, but I'm not enjoying it. No, no, no. You you're making it sound like I'm hating the game. I, like, I didn't I, I, I hate think the you game. you might be making it sound like you hate the game. I didn't hate the game. I just found it You said you couldn't average. find any fun in the game, and the only reason you played it was to get 50% of the trophies. I think you're no. making it sound like you don't like this game, Liam. Not yeah, me. maybe. But, you know, I think our listeners are smart enough to know what I'm trying to say. I don't think they are, because I'm not. Because that's the thing. Sometimes with, with when I say words and stuff, they kind of come out, but not necessarily in the right way. And then I just have to hope that people are smart enough to figure out what I'm meant to say. I don't think you should rely on other people being smart to correct the weird things you say. It's kind of how I have to live my life. But yeah, like 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 I said at the start, for me it was a three out of five game. Um, maybe I was being a bit unfair. Maybe a week would have been enough for me, and then I'd have probably been like, I get it, you know? Because I I do feel like um, maybe a week is a good amount of time to have a little try with each character. It's hard to do that in two days. Um, yeah. But it's just... It's the other thing I would say, and I don't know if you'd agree, at the moment, and I'm sure this will change, at the moment it's it's very... Or at least once you play it enough, it gets to a point where it's very samey. It's, it's almost like... And I don't just mean that by like, it's only a handful of levels you have. But certain levels, you almost can start predicting how the enemy are going to play that level. Okay, like what? Um, like I can't remember what it's called. I don't know the names. Yeah, I'm, I'm not good with the names of the levels. There's the one right where you go under the tunnel, and then you go back outside. We were playing it. And we had a, like a nightmare against a load of bastions. It was me, you, and Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Like that level, you can kind of expect. Right, I'm going to come out the gate. There's a tour beyond that's going to put a turret up opposite where I come out. Um, there's probably going to be a Reinhardt or something minning around. There's probably a tracer or someone zipping around, and like you can start almost predicting how the enemy is going to behave. Bearing in mind the enemy is an AI. That's what I mean when I say it's... For me, it's like getting to a very samey point. Yeah, but I wonder how much of that, though, is the way you play it. I can't affect how the enemy plays, though. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. You do. Because I've had matches where we've all started as one player and then people have switched to adapt, right? So, whereas you, not in a negative way, because it worked, it's fine... But because you were doing the trophy thing, a lot of the times we were playing, yeah. you would be playing as one character and that was it. What I got to the stage of is, because I was, I was also trying to learn what the trophies were. Once I'd figured that out more, I had like three that I would rotate through depending yeah, on yeah. the Yeah, because you, you were switching towards the end, yeah. Yeah, but it was, was just yeah, learning was a, what the trophies were. Early on were. you were playing as like one character. Yeah. But I wonder how much of it is that you're limiting yourself by doing that. Oh, 100%. Because like, I, don't, I don't play as one character. Cause... No, but that's kind of the issue with... Um, me struggling to find a reason to play it when I try and bring that reason in trophies that still doesn't make it more fun but I don't so understand that was are you saying you don't enjoy it because you're saying you're gonna, you're, that you'll give it a 3 out of 5 hmm. but the way you're saying like you had to inject your own fun into it and stuff it sounds like you yeah. didn't like this game at all so when you I did see, that's what I don't understand I don't understand how you can be giving it 3 out of 5 I'm all not right. necessarily annoyed by your opinion I'm annoyed that's... by the fact that you're claiming you're going to give it three point three out of 5 but you're also you didn't enjoy the game. You had to find your own fun. Let's talk about the trophies for a second, which I know is no, something that you. No, I don't care about you... trophies. That's yeah, I know you don't, but I do. No one cares about them except you <laughs> and Dan. Dan's not trying to get them all. He likes getting them. Yeah, He's there not we go. Trying. No, but you know he he might care. He might probably won't listen. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Here's the thing with the trophies. I I'd say some of them definitely skill based. Definitely skill based. More often than not, a lot of them, luck and circumstance. Go on, examples. Um, I got a trophy, didn't even realise, like, complete blind luck. More than one, more than one. And I, I'd say a lot of them, it's just being in the right place at the right time. The enemy has lined up nicely. So a, a, a lot of trophies, it will be kill four or more enemies using a character's kind of super ultimate ability, right? Yeah. Now, a lot of them will require, basically, four characters to be clustered together. And if the enemy are doing that, they're not really playing the game right. So that makes it... depends makes on what it... you're talking about, though. Um, unless they're like, like, trying if, to if, capture if an objective. If they're pushing, if they're doing that one where you've got like uh, effectively escort a vehicle, mm. 
then you can easily end up with all five of the team around there and that you not really being a shouldn't though no you 100% can you shouldn't what about at the end of a match when you're all pushing it that final bit yeah but what you should be doing really is killing them so they're spawning and coming back like for, for five enemies to be collected together at one time I'd say that's really common unlikely and then you not only that but then like so for example um then you have to get the kill in a certain way, doing certain things. Some of them are just ridiculous. Like, I would say, unless you're in a the group... Wall, the, the wall ride one is ridiculous. Yes. But uh, that is skill. That's a skill one. The Widowmaker one, I will admit, feels like... Ridiculous. Up. I don't know. Unless it might be easier on PC. I don't know if the PC has trophies similar to that. Possibly. But, but this thing... So, so for example, um, Divas, yeah? Yeah. Complete luck when I got that. No. I blindfired yeah, no, no, no. it. I think you can get them by luck. Yeah. But no I, skill. I, I don't think that means there's not skill. No, because there is. No, so, so that's what I'm saying. Some of them, definitely skill. And I'm sure the more skillful players will find them like a breeze to get with certain characters at least. Yeah, right. Okay, that's what but, I was trying to get across was that they aren't. When you say it, because, yeah. Take, you made it sound like they are just like luck. Yeah, based. take McCree, for but example. They can be skill. Like, you can get the trophy with skill but some of them you can also get lucky and get them. Not only skill, you do also need to be lucky in that the enemy team are where you need them to be. So take McCree, for example, right? Um, his his trophy, perfect example, uh, he's got this ability called uh, like Deadshot or something. Where, yeah, um, I, is it? Or yeah, something like that. Where these like targeting reticules appear on the enemy and you have to kind of give it a couple of seconds, they'll line up, and then it's one hit kill, right? If it lines up and the enemy stays in your line of sight. So when I got that trophy, I had a character called May on my team who put a wall of ice up in front of me. As that came down, like a couple of seconds before I started the the dead eye, whatever it was called, that came down. He immediately targeted four enemies in front, and I just hit the button. Zero skill. Yeah, but you're saying one hundred percent luck. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that you can get the trophy with luck, mm. but you could also, if you're if you've got a skilled uh, McCray on your team. And, uh, I've had McCree's. I've had McCree's take out like four people on my team and yeah. get player of the match. I only know it because I've seen it on player of the match. Yeah, but no, but where it, I'm like, he wasn't lucky. He knew that we were yeah. doing a push, so he waited until we did a push. Let us take out like the first couple of his team, but he got himself in a position where he could use his dead eye to take out our team. But again, it also does rely on the enemy team kind of doing what you're hoping they'll do. No, I think you're. I think you just are assuming that everyone plays it the way you do. No, not at all. But what I'm saying, so it takes. I again. honestly think you can get players that know what they're doing, right? Yeah. So I think you could have where the final push, you're all your team is trying to get the so just picture this scene, Liam. Mm-hmm. You're escorting the vehicle, yeah, you've done the last checkpoint, yeah. you've got yeah. to get it to that final point. So your whole team, you're in overtime, right? You get to overtime. Yeah. And you get which uh listeners overtime happens if you're still pushing an objective. Like if you have a chance of capturing an objective over time will run until either you get it or your team is wiped out and not able to get there in time right so picture Liam you're in overtime you're doing the final push you're meters away right what you're saying is that you think that your half your team are just going to like airy fairy out of there and just disappear around the map and that a McCree couldn't go oh I'm pretty positive that their whole team is going to try and push this objective the last bit so I'm going to get behind them and use my ult on them what I or a Hanzo would wouldn't fire through the middle and go, I know that their whole team's pushing this point, so I'm going to use my ult. What I think would happen from experience is you'd have three of your team push in, you'd have another person running because he's just been killed and he recently respawned, and then you'll probably have someone else fuck knows where doing whatever they want on another part of the map. Right, which brings us back to the whole there is a disparity between the low levels and the high levels, which is what but, we were saying okay. earlier. So Do I you think that think... it is skill based because I think that high level players would be playing it the right way. Do you think two teams of high level players would be able to kind of instantly kill the entire other team if they were both high level? Yeah, if a McCree gets behind you, the levels don't change anything else. Well, no, you they, they change if the one of players' your team, experience. So if one of your team slips up and lets a McCree get behind you, then yeah, I think a McCree could easily take out your whole team if he was there. So you think a whole team of, of well experienced players would group up? like that on the final point in overtime yes because that's the only way you can guarantee it and you don't think getting to that point one of them would have been killed and they'd have been respawning and running they'd all be there so your, your complaint is your complaint is that you can only get these things by random chance and luck mm-hmm. when I give you a situation in which you could get it without that you say but random chance and luck would have happened yeah 
Right. Well, you're making a ridiculous point that makes no sense. Yes, I, in, your hypothet- I think in the hypothetical universe that you live in, where only things that you decide can happen happen, yes, it would be impossible to get it with skill. You're right. In the real universe that the rest of us live in, I genuinely think that most okay. of those things could be gotten by a skilled player who was actually trying. I'm going to say um, slightly more luck than skill. I'd say 40% skill, 60% luck. I'd say it's 40% knowing your character and knowing where to be with your character. And then 60% hoping the enemy also does what they need to do for them to be where they need to be for your thing to work. Right, well, I disagree with you. And we're not going to agree, so don't worry about yeah. it. So but what we've done with this discussion, right, is we've had a lot of my thoughts on it. So let's have the alternative side of why you like it. Because so, I've, t- I've said a lot of why I didn't like it. Why did you like it? The issue is when you go first, I use all the reasons that I like it to counter your this is why I don't like it. Okay. So like... I really like it because I genuinely enjoy the matches that I've been part of that aren't based on luck but where your team are all working together to achieve the goal. Mm. So you're actually playing right. Just cause, But you then are like, well, I've never seen that match. That's fine. No, That's I've seen it. something like that. Um, no, you I'll... just said that you've never had it. Your whole team disappear off around the map and aren't doing the right thing. You tend to have one or two that will buckle off and do anything but every now and again you'll have a team that are in sync. Right. I enjoy those matches. But even, the, the... When I'm in a match, even when I'm in a match where that's not happening... I yeah. usually can find a way to enjoy it. Like, I'll be playing... So, if I've got a really bad team, usually I'll play one of the flanking characters, mm. like Tracer or Genji, who Tracer can uh, zip around the map using super speed. And Genji Well, it's more like teleporting. Is, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a teleport, isn't it? She slips... She leaves the time stream, Liam, and reappears yeah. in it at the correct point. Yeah. Uh, Genji, who can climb up walls, is quite fast, and has a slash sort of dash move. But the, I, I, He's so like a samurai, right? Yeah, yeah. If I'm in a team that's not particularly like well together, I'll usually play as one of them because that way you can disrupt the. If the other team are playing well together, say they have like a support hero, you can usually disrupt some of their team by being a flanker and taking out the weaker characters. Yeah. So even when a game's not like particularly coherent, you can still enjoy it because you can still have a chance. Like even with bad teams, I've got to the point where there are some maps where you uh, capture a central point and that adds to your score and the team wins when they get to 100%, and if you both get to 99%, the game gives you overtime, yeah. and uh, I've had matches where I've been like, my whole team's being shit, I hate this, and then suddenly being like, wait a minute, we've got 99%, they've got 99%, and it all comes down to this crazy battle in the middle. Like, that's what I like about this game. I like that it's really quick matches, it's not something I have to dedicate hours to, I don't have to sit down and go, right, I've got to have two hours aside where I can play Overwatch. I can literally go on this game, play a match, if I'm like going somewhere and I'm like, I haven't got much time, but I've got, you know, 15 minutes. Mm. I can fit a game of Overwatch in. Yeah. I really enjoy... I, I, I enjoy the loot boxes. As much as I'm not playing to get them anymore, I will admit that I have bought loot boxes. Yeah, yeah, with actual money. Yep. Because I, gen- I, I like this game, and I like the fact that I'm supporting Blizzard. I'm fine with that. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that's why I like this do game. You, I like do you not agree? Game. So, another kind of... Not really a complaint, but I, I do wish there had been more game modes available. Because there's essentially, what, two? Three. Three. Which... So there's three game modes and, like, a handful of maps. Um, yeah, but they're, they're, they're going to add more. That's the See, this is the good thing yeah, about Blizzard. No, they are this is what I had with Hearthstone. Hearthstone yes. started with that core pack. You yeah. had the core, like, cards and that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they consistently have added to the game. They've added story mode stuff. Yeah, yeah. They've but... added... They've got to a point where they've had to start removing old packs from the... They've had to set up a whole other, like type of rotation yeah but what I'm saying is um, we can't review this game based on what they might add no but we know right it's not what they might add they've, they've confirmed that they're releasing more stuff we're getting two yeah but we, we can't review that because we no, haven't tried it yet no of course you can that's ridiculous sorry we can review something that we haven't played no I'm not reviewing the new content I'm saying to you the fact that it's been released literally there are, there's a whole type of game called early access which I don't particularly like but the premise is that you get a small part of the game and they say to you, well, this is what we're also going to be releasing. And then you fund them based on that. So yeah, of course I can say I enjoy Overwatch and I'm pretty positive Blizzard are going to add more stuff that I can will enjoy. Yeah, so that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying they're I'm not, not going gonna, to I'm not add gonna more go. stuff. I'm not going to go, it's five out of five because they might add an extra game mode, Liam. I love this game by itself. If yeah. they weren't adding more stuff, I wouldn't care. You were the one that said, are you not upset yeah. they've got, not got... I'm not, no, so I that's what I'm care. saying. I think they've got enough game modes. I but I would be think... fine with more. I just yeah. don't, at the moment, I'm fine with what we got. I think for release, it was a, a little bit slight. I, I would have liked, personally, a little bit more 
variety. Yeah, but you also... Right. <sighs> Just in the game modes. I think the, the character roster was fine. Yeah, see, that's exactly what Exactly the right amount. You can criticise their... You can't say... I, like, it's like... You're like the kid in the sweet shop <laughs> whose parents go, here's a pound, get what you want. So he yeah. gets a bunch and then he goes, oh, it sucks though because I didn't get that other thing that I wanted. Like, they that's... gave you all these characters. They created, like you said, a game that's fairly well balanced yeah. considering. Yeah. Right? They gave you all this and then you go, yeah, but there's not enough maps. Like, it's, hmm. it's such a minor thing but it is if it, if it, I'm not saying I'm annoyed by it. I'm just saying um, it, that might have kept me playing for a little bit longer. You know, like at, at I'll the be moment, honest, Liam. I'll be honest with you. I, I honestly don't think Blizzard give a shit about you. you. No, specifically you. I don't think anyone's going. Liam Underwood has said he's not going to play Overwatch anymore, and that is the biggest blow to Overwatch we're ever going to have. It might be. And I, I at this point don't care that you're not going to play it anymore. I would love you to. No, but I know you're not going to. So I'm saying, so, I feel like I've reached a point with it where there's nothing new for me to discover with it. Whereas if there was maybe a few more maps, it would take me longer to reach that point. That's a fair thing to say. I don't think it is. Because I think it rolls back to the point of this game wasn't made for you. I no, don't think you're the type of person wasn't. that would ever have enjoyed this game. But I'm not saying I hated it. I'm saying it was I know, average. I know. I'm not, I'm not saying you hate it either. I'm just saying I don't think you're the kind... Like, I can see myself playing this for a fair long time after this like yeah. I'm probably going to be playing it for quite a while because I would say you're for some reason and I don't know why but I'd say from what I've seen with your games that you like you tend to not go for the very narratively driven stuff that requires right, well, that a bit of time investment of what I usually, that is the opposite of what my game collection says so I will disagree with you there I for mean, sure. this is just based on games we've discussed okay like there's, I, I'd say the games that we talk about and that you seem to play a lot of aren't games that are very story driven right you're wrong but okay I get what you're saying yeah but you're wrong okay because so I've yet to have a discussion with you where you were like oh, I played this game and it was an amazing story it's always something else what are you, you talking about the Mass Effect trilogy is one of my favourite games of all time I love all three of those games they're only story based the original Dragon Age Origins is one of my favourite games Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 are two of my favourite games Neverwinter Nights was a fucking fantastic game they're all story-based games, and they are easily in my top list of games. And yet you've never completed The Last of Us. That doesn't make sense. It's not in my top list of games. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, so what you actually mean, it's not that you don't think I like story games. It's that I didn't like the one story game that no, you that... think is god of all. No, no, no. Like The Bioshock games, Both of the, all three of those are fucking incredible. I love those games. But I didn't play Last of Us, so I don't like story games. No, I'm saying when we discuss games, you don't discuss story-based games, typically. Because like, it seems like lately, the games that you've been playing haven't been story-based. Or at least the games you've been playing and talking about. Because before um, Overwatch, it was that game where you were some alien civilization thing. What was that one? Stellaris. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Is that it? But that's an RTS. Exactly. That's, that's, not, that's not got its own story, but that's because you're making your own story. So while while I get what you're saying, yeah, there's not a narrative that's been written for me. The my fucking like Dominion of Korg took over half the galaxy, being based entirely on research. They were a peaceful race, but they were actually lying to most people and would use war to take over territory that they thought had good resources. So while yeah, there wasn't a narrative written into the game, I have a little thing, Liam, that I like to call imagination, and I use that to make my games fun and narrative based. Do you do that with Overwatch? Yeah, like how you said, I have tracked down all of the uh, cinematic films that they made for Overwatch. I've yeah. read the backstories for most characters. I love the story of Overwatch that isn't in the game, but it's a story that exists. There are I have a question. Books, I might get them. I have a question. Go on. Why did they not put the story, well not the story, but the cinematics at least, in the game? So you know because how... Because they don't usually do cinematics like that in a game. But you know how like uh, with each character you can unlock like skins and stuff? Why not also be able to unlock a cinematic for each one? Because they haven't got a story for each one made into a cinematic. They've got three, I think, at the moment. I mean, th- and this one is... Of not, one of them's not about a specific character. This was one of my big issues with playing the game, is I never, like, like beyond just enjoying it, I never felt like I knew why I was playing it from a, from a you know, like, within the game perspective. Like, I never knew why this group of characters were working together to escort this car to the objective. But yeah, that's because that wouldn't make sense. You'd have to limit what characters you could play as. Yeah, well, no, but like, you know... Because you couldn't have, like, you couldn't in, have Reaper team up with Soldier 76. In something in like... the lore, Soldier 76 was the original leader of Overwatch, and uh, Reaper used to work for Overwatch, but went bad. 
See, in a game like Call of Duty, right? There's yeah. there is a uh, it's weak, but there is you know you're you're very aware. Oh, okay, we're the Americans and they're the whoever it is this week that we. Yeah, killing. but that's what I'm saying. It wouldn't work if you had to limit half the team. Yes, but what I'm saying is, so when I'm playing it, I don't know my character's motivation. Right. Well, I think that's a weird re- like. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I understand. I understand that you would have liked there to have been a narrative, but my only the only thing I can say to you would be that this game wasn't made to be a narrative game. And no, if you I, can't appreciate I get that. it if you if you can't appreciate a game when there isn't a narrative, that's fair enough because that's what you like. That's cool. But I think you shouldn't fixate on the lack of narrative. Like I don't know, it feels weird to me that like I love narrative games, but I can enjoy a game that doesn't have a narrative. Yeah, but see, this is what I'm saying. Two like, different things. A game... I, think, I think you're too fixated on the idea, on this idea you have of what a game is. No, the thing is, I'm saying which a, is weird, with a... I love mobile games, and half of them don't have stories, so I don't understand how you can love them. With a game like Overwatch, I just don't see why I would pick it up to play it again. Like to have fun, to have 15 minutes of fun, because your friends are on there playing it, and you're like, but... cool, we can have a team and we can all work together. Th- Those are the, the reasons. It's an average game, right? So no, <laughs> it's don't say not... that. Like I'm going to agree with you. You know I'm not. <laughs> it's not that fun. It is fun. I don't. That's what I don't understand, and I don't think either of us are going to be able to explain it. But I genuinely enjoy this game, and you don't enjoy the same things that I'm enjoying about it. Three out of five. Four point five out of five. Wait, so four point five out of five. Yeah. Uh, what could they have done differently to have got that five for you? I don't know. To get a f- like. Okay. When yeah. I'm yeah. Saying four point five, it's not because something was missing. All right, so let's, can we very quickly, before we wrap this up, just do a little role reversal, and you say one thing you don't like about the game, and I'll say one thing I do like about the I game. I said one thing I don't like about the game. What was it? I don't like the fact that you can be put on a team that completely fails. Like, if your team aren't but, working together, you can have a match that is just terrible. <coughs> but how could you prevent that? You couldn't. I'm not saying, yeah, like like I'm, like I'm a lot of your points, there's you can't change it, because you would change the core of Overwatch. Mm. Okay, so that's one thing that you don't like. Is, would you, yeah. is there more things? I'm not going to ask you to go into them, but are there more things? Not particularly. Okay. I think that's my main issue. Those are the things that have annoyed me with it. Fair enough. What's one thing you loved? One thing I loved about it is the fact that um, with with the characters, what they did very well, I thought, was each character felt very unique and distinct from the others. And yeah. considering how many characters there are, I think that's quite an achievement to pull off. That was our thoughts on Overwatch. As per usual, we disagreed. I hope um, it made sense. It probably won't have, but it might have, because I'm editing this episode and it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, so that's something for you to look forward to. Thanks for listening to Nerd on Nerd. I've been Liam Underwood. I've been Jack Campster. And if you'd like, you can tweet us at Nerd on Nerd. Let us know your thoughts. If you want longer thoughts, then why don't you email us, nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com. Um... We've now got a Twitch channel, if you know what that is. So see if you can find us there. Um, maybe we'll give it a go at some point. I'm, I'm thinking that's more going to be Jack will be doing that more than me because he's more the gamer of the two. Maybe. We'll see. Um, we've also got a YouTube channel. Uh, go subscribe. That would help us out a lot. It's really hard to find. So just go to our Twitter and find a link on there or something. Or type in It's Just a Fleshlight, Episode 1, Nerd or Nerd. Perfect. That'll get you there. Um, Adam and Eve, if you're listening, we'll take that sponsorship. Thank you very Dildos much. Dildos galore. And um, don't forget, next time we're doing Snowpiercer. So definitely let us know your thoughts on that movie. And otherwise, have a good couple of weeks until we see you when we see you. Maybe we'll do Blab at some point. Who knows? We should do, yeah. Yeah, we probably should, but who knows? Bye. Conjuring. Bye. Bye. I'm just going to carry on all this lovely content. For Jack to use. Liam is brilliant. Liam is fantastic. I really like Liam.